talk about um, this topic, modularizing Mapbox. Uh, so for those of you who haven't come across Mapbox before, it's an open source mapping platform. Um, it's got beautiful maps and in my opinion, the best vector tiles out there. Um, their performance is outstanding and they look great, so it's definitely worth a look if you haven't seen it already. Um, the Mapbox GL.js is a really powerful JavaScript library, um, which you can use to build mapping applications. Mapbox publishes a lot of free examples on how you use Mapbox GL JavaScript, but kind of the trouble that you have is that they're all in isolation to one another. If you're like myself or Alex by the sound of it, and JavaScript maybe doesn't come so naturally, um, then I've got a kind of a solution for you around modularizing your code. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen um, this push towards uh, configuration over code. Um, it's something that I both understand and really struggle with in terms of using it inside an organization as well. Um, if you've ever been in a large organization where you've come in and had to support a ton of hairy scripts that sort of run but no one wants to touch, no one could modify, um, all that sort of thing, you understand why there's a push towards configuration. But if you've then worked in a solely configuration only environment, you get really frustrated if there's a really simple solution that you can execute with a really simple bit of code, but you're kind of pigeonholed into we only really support configuration because of those past problems. Um, so the solution or the suggestion that I have here is around um, building a configuration solution which makes use of code um, that can help you to reduce your development time significantly, and then it can also make sure that all of your apps are really supportable um, and that they're delivered in a kind of consistent way each time. Um, so to do this, what you want to do when you develop is develop each component of your apps as a standalone feature, um, and then those features can be brought together with an integration tool. I'm going to use FME in the demo in just a second, but you could use Python, I think the concept I have here would work really well as a QGIS extension as well. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the code that you use each time is the same. There's just a small amount that actually needs to um, be configured. So you make it customizable where that's required, but constant where it needs to be as well. You still get the ability to use code to develop great applications, but you ensure that all of these applications are consistent. They can be developed really quickly and they can be supported because each one should follow kind of the same recipe. So if we take a map application, um, you look at all of these components and pretty much every single map application needs to have some of these in some way. Um, but if you develop from scratch each time, you have to develop each one of these from scratch each time. Um, they take time, everyone naturally does things slightly differently you'll do things slightly differently each time that you create an application as well, it does become really hard to kind of maintain consistency um, if you're not configuring it. Um, so I'm going to give you two very quick demos around the solution that I've built, um, which makes use of this. Um, I've got one using Auckland train stations, and then the second one around um, dock huts. Um, so I work as an FME consultant, so the, naturally the tool I've gravitated towards is FME. Um, I've created one workspace which has been published as an FME server application. Um, that FME server, sorry, that FME workspace just has a ton of published parameters and when you publish those to FME server, they're exposed um, as essentially kind of yeah, parameters that can be configured and then passed into the workspace. So if, effectively this is just a web form. Um, I'll start with the uh, train stations app. Um, I've got just a series of kind of common things that you would need to configure um, inside an application. So um, I've got things like uploading a logo, naming the application, choosing a theme color. We'll go for sort of an AT sort of blue. Um, we'll choose our input sort of extent, so we'll see where this map should be centered. Choose a default base map, choose things like what other base maps you want as options. Let's go with dark, light, maybe street. What sort of other parameters? Do you want this map to be 2D, 3D? Do you want a search tool? Do you want map controls? All of these things that if you're coding it each time, they do take time and you'll write it slightly differently every time or you'll just do what I do and copy-paste it from your old code into your new code and 
everything starts to get hairy and unstuck very quickly. Um, so this layer that I'll upload is called train stations and we'll just point to a train stations geojson file. Um, you could make that very customizable but we'll stick with geojson for now. Um, another common thing you might choose is what, what field contains the information that you want to show on a pop-up. So I'll choose stop name and maybe something like an icon color. Now when I run this, um, this is going to go ahead and compile my code for me. In the background, it's just going to copy through these components which I've written in JavaScript once, fortunately. I don't have to write them again. And then sort of inserted all of those dynamic parts into the code for me. So if I hit the download, I get a zip. Unpack that. And what we see is possibly a touch small for you guys, but what we've got is this nicely compiled code which contains the images, the data, the style, an index page, and then all of the relevant JavaScript that's been customized the way it needs to. So if I go ahead and open up that code, just in VS Code quickly, and hit go live, what we see is we get, you can see I've got a little bit of work to do as far as the how far it needs to zoom in. Um, but what you can see there is that We've got a map using the Mapbox GL.js. Um, we've got all of that data showing for the train stations. We've got the pop-up displaying. We've got this theme working, a street-based map. And then we've got the options that I chose as the what I want the, the, the base map gallery to show. Now, if we go back to the map builder again and do another very quick run of it, um, I'll just use the second demo um, to show you that while this application is very simple and very straightforward, we can create quite a different app with just uh, filling out a web form essentially again. So I'll take the example of TOC Huts. Point to an icon. Again, theme. out a dot green and maybe for TOC cool so in this case we'll go for a satellite map probably makes more sense we'll say hybrid outdoors and satellite and in this case I'll go with a 3d map so I figured out how to do a 3d map once in Mapbox let's not reinvent the wheel and try and do that every time let's just make this a setting to add in that code and again, just configure something like the layers. Point to Doc Hearts. This one's name. It'll make these hearts a nice bright pink. Again, same experience. You run it, you get a zip file. You look at it and the code should look exactly the same on the outset because the code should effectively be roughly the same. It's what's under it that should change. But as far as the, the different locations of the files, um, where the images go, where the data goes, it should always be consistent. So if we drag that open, and hit go live, we now get a 3D application. You see we've got the title correct, we've got the icon loading, we zoom in and what we should see is actually, yeah, a 3D application now um, showing all of the huts around the country. Green theming should probably get a secondary theme to get the dot yellow in there as well. But um, yeah, very, very simple as far as then showing a completely different application. Um, most of this code, as you'll know, stays, well, should stay essentially exactly the same, but it won't when you write it yourself. So have someone else write it for you and get it working once. And what's happening is most of this stays consistent. It's just the layers. It's just everything else that changes. So that's it from me. Um, thanks very much.